So we've got a question here from Sarah, Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana. I was watching a program on a diet, CNN, and uh, about eat fast and live longer. So this is a question basically, someone's asking for weight loss advice. Let's get into it, shall we? I had a book by Paul Bragg, American health practitioner who advocated fasting. Years ago when I was vegan, except I still ate honey, I used to do that fasting thing. Once I went for two whole weeks on nothing but water. I continued to jog 6K every day during that time. Whoa, that is adrenal burnout. On the 13th day, I was jogging up some hills in Glen. And on holiday, when my heart seriously started to race and I felt so uncomfortable and strange, I decided enough was enough. Yeah, because basically what you're doing when you're fasting, you should be in bed. Okay, you shouldn't be, When you're exercising, using up electrolytes and you're not replacing that in your food, so you're basically just running your electrolyte levels way down and what you're doing as well is you're thrashing your adrenal glands which can impact your kidneys so you can't balance out your electrolyte level so then you can get some heart issues so decided enough enough I started eating again the next day I found out after my altitude towards food had totally changed after the fast I wanted to eat lots way lots I was still my vegan self but I was a pig and over ate it seemed that I couldn't get enough all the good work I had done kilograms shed all came back on within a week of course because <laughs> if you're eating like a vegan diet with a lot of fat and salt it can really puff you out but if you're eating a diet based on fruits and maybe with some starch McDougal style meals as a backup plan you're going to be all sucked in like the like the gaunt Duran rider look at that face all full of fat <laughs> I, look like, I look like Lance Armstrong on a full cycle of Clen and Edgar um, so we've, we've done the fast for two weeks we're training hard and now we're binging back in the binge cycle after that experience I never looked at food the same way again indulging became something that was hard to resist sugary fatty foods became really desirable because your body's going whoa we, we, we just had a two week situation with no food man and we weren't in bed we were out exercising we were out living so anything you can see in front of you put in your put in your mouth so basically our friend Sarah's on the seafood diet seafood eat it so I struggled to not eat the wrong things Last year, it was depressing being off the bike and in out of hospital off time off work. So it sounds like this person had an injury, so I comfort eight. Now I'm paying for it is if I have two bicycles strapped to my back to carry up hills everywhere else on the bike. It says gained 14 kilo, 28 pounds. I can't say I'm vegan anymore because I have some eating some free range eggs, a cupcake, chocolate, things like that. Um, I just need to change my eating habits, definitely. And getting some more raw stuff. I want to get a food dehydrator. You don't need a dehydrator. We don't own one. You don't need a dehydrator. You can buy your dried fruit. Um, and all those raw food snacks, man, they're too greasy and fatty and salty and they don't give you enough carbohydrates to feel really vital. So dehydrator, save your money. You don't need one unless you want to dry bananas and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get fitter. There's some small rides and a bike ride recently. Um... Doing a weekly ride. Blah, blah, blah. I thought it would be better to build up to getting fitter before I joined the faster kind of rides where everyone goes fast. Um, okay, so my tips for this person would be, okay, they're a cyclist. Awesome, because cycling is the best <laughs> slimming sport on the planet. No, No doubt about that. People might say Harley, but running is takes years, takes years to build up the leg, the bone strength, the tendon strength. It takes years of consistent running training to build up that bone and tendon strength, so you can be able to do this the mileage. All right, cycling you can just jump straight into it almost. You want to ease into it, but you know what I mean. You can, like, I did a running race on last Sunday, twenty four kilometers. I'm still sore today. It's Friday. I'm still so sore that I can't run. Okay, so running is the worst thing for weight loss, for, for getting fit. It's, uh, it's good if you're maybe running up. It's running, forget running. Running is to get 
fast on the bike, do some running. But for weight loss, running sucks. It is just it's too hard, man. You got you got you got to basically be an African kid who's ran from five years old to school for twenty years, and then you can get to some serious training. Fifteen years at least. Forget running. Cycling is where it's at. So we've got the cycling. What happens is basically when we do these fasting things, I'm a fan of fasting, but at the same time, I'm not a fan of fasting. If you have a health condition, maybe fasting is for you. But then again, why not just live the lifestyle that's supportive of health? Eat the diet that's supportive of health. High carb, low fat, vegan, fruit focused, all, all fruit and vegetables if you can do it. If you can find enough quality fruits that taste good and satisfy your appetite, failing that, high fruit diet, starches, things like that, McDougal style. Done enough videos about that. People can look it up. Lifestyle, go to bed, eight, nine o'clock, no cough, no caffeine, no alcohol, no recreational drugs. The only drugs you should take would be painkillers for emergency surgery. Or if you're a type one diabetic on insulin, obviously. But you know what I mean? So a lot of people is they they want to do a quick fix thing and they don't want to change all the other stuff. You know, they want to eat their chocolate or eat their eggs and stuff like that or whatever, or their salty, greasy, deep fried stuff, but they don't, you know, they think a two week fast can just erase all that. It's, it does erase it for two weeks <laughs> and then you go back to your own lifestyle. It's a bit like, it's a bit like you, you work in a job you hate to buy crap you don't need and your boss really pisses you off. You hate your boss. You've got a voodoo doll at home and you stab your boss in the face every night when you get home. Then you have a two-week holiday and you're like, oh, it feels so good. This holiday is so good. Great. But what are you going to do when you go back? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're still in that environment, that atmosphere, that ecosystem that you don't enjoy. It's not supportive of your health. And diet is even harder because if you work for an idiot boss, you can sort of change your perception, change your procedure, how you deal with things. But you can't change the way chemically foods interact in your body. You can't eat junk and expect to be slim. Doesn't you can't eat you can't eat like a bodybuilder and expect to be slim. That stuff's designed to spike your insulin and get you big. That's why when if you go to a gym and you talk to all the, the twenty year old guys and you say to them, you know, what's up guys? <laughs> you know, we'll get some juice, get some gear. Yeah. There's some whey protein. What are these guys eating, man? Seriously, what are they eating? They're eating whey. They're eating eggs. They're eating steak. They're eating fish. I got my, I got my tilapia lamb bulking up. I'm eating my tilapia. And then you go to them, hey guys, like, what do you think of rice? And they go, oh, rice, man, makes you fat. You know, like fruit, no, nah, too much sugar makes you fat. And then you talk for a few more minutes and then you say, you know what, like, I'm on this, like, vegan thing, man, and I eat heaps of rice and fruit and I'm fully lean. Oh, but you're like, nah, mate, that stuff makes you too skinny. Makes you too skinny. Rice and fruit makes you too skinny. Like, you want to be a skinny Asian, not, you know? But hey, you guys just said that before you can't eat carbs because they make you fat. But now you're saying if you live on carbs, you get too too lean, jawbones sticking out of your head, cheekbones, the Lance Armstrong effect. But what's the deal? So my tip is you got to, no animal products at all. Everything we need is fed in plant foods. Okay, all the and all the body manufacturers, everything we need. If you have some genetic issue, where you don't produce enough intrinsic factor B twelve, whatever, you take a, a vitamin supplement. That's all you need. Because vitamin B twelve deficiency can be common in today's society. I see it a lot in meat eaters. I will see it a lot in people from all representations of diet. Cats and dogs. Ask your local vet if you can get a B twelve shot for your cat and dog, or your rat, or your tiger. Yes, you can. So B twelve deficiency. That's a common one. That can be a genuine issue. So yeah, supplementing that, that can be okay because we live in a very sterile society, pollution, chlorine, stuff like that. So the B12 is a bit of a get back to nature thing that even, I've done videos about it where companies add B12 to the pet food for dogs and cats where the first ingredient is chicken, yet it's got a list as B12 added to the food. So whenever someone says, oh, but B12, it's because you're vegan. It's like, they don't have any idea what the deal is. They don't have any idea. Getting back to the subject, What's going to happen is all this starving and calorie restricting is just going to be thrashing your thyroid. In my my hunches, it's going to be thrashing your thyroid. Your T three levels are going to be like just deficient as so your your body's become like a more of a fat storer, a fluid storer, 
That's what people forget is it's not always, always fat. A lot of it can be just fluid because the body's going, well, we've got to hold on to fluid because we don't know what's going to happen, man. We're in this fucking, we're like a camel. We're in this like famine, binge, starch, binge, starch. There's no, there's no stability, so the body's freaking out. When you give the body nutritional stability, caloric stability, carbohydrate, caloric stability, it's like, ah, you know what I mean? It's, it's chill. It's like getting, when you're getting money in your bank account every week or every month, you can sort of relax. But if you have to go months without any income or whatever, you're like, you just, you see five cents in the ground, you pick it up, you see a penny on the, in, the, in the phone box and you just like run them over and grab it. <laughs> that's what your body becomes like. It's just like, it's a story from, because we don't know what's going to happen. So that's why all these insanity programs and P90X and 12 week body transformation, 1200 calories a day, anorexia diets, they always lead to weight gain. 100%, you get a broken collarbone or you get injured or you get chronic fatigue and the weight piles on, 100%. And then people go back to the same vicious habits. What you gotta do is you gotta stop and start anew and go, okay, we're gonna be vegan, 100%. We're gonna go high carb, low fat. We're gonna keep our sodium intake under under 1,000 milligrams a day easily. If you're really active, maybe 1,500 milligrams a day easy. The more salt you eat, the more fluid retention you're gonna have. The more fat you eat, the more fat you're gonna have. As simple as that. So that's how you reverse metabolic damage, flood your body with nutritious, high carbohydrate plant foods with fruit being the magical preference. Failing that, steamed starches, steamed potatoes, steamed sweet potatoes, steamed yam, steamed rice, steamed quinoa, steamed millet. These high carbohydrate plant foods, whole foods. Early nights, enough water so you pee and clear at least 10 times a day and get back in your training. You've got to move that body, pump that lymphatic system, help flush out the old dead salt retention and stuff like that. You need that sunshine, you need the activity. At least five to 10 hours a week riding a bike, at least. Not hard, just at talking pace, or at a pace where you can listen to an audiobook and take it in. And maybe 15 to 30 minutes a week where you're really at asthma attack pace, but no more than 15 to 30 minutes a week of hardness, okay? The rest of the time, five to 10 hours, riding to work, blah, 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 you're just up and down. I'm not sort of the last stop people have got, but that's my tip. Can't ride a bike, walk. Can't walk in your wheelchair, five, 10 hours a week. Just cruising around, get fit, man. Diet gets you slim, sport gets you toned and fit, okay? That's what we wanna focus on. So, done a lot of these videos, same subject again and again. I don't mind answering the question, because it's a common one. So, is fasting a good idea for weight loss? Definitely not, it just all it does is slow metabolism down, makes you want to binge out and nasty shit later on and your body just starts freaking out. So always look at your diet, improve your lifestyle. Done.